Hello everybody and welcome back for another episode of War Thunder. Today flying the BF109G2 Tropical on a sim event on the Operation Ruin map. And I've said it before, uh, but the 109G2 is probably my favorite ride so far in War Thunder. Um, I've mentioned it already, the 109G2 is a very good mix of characteristics. It's fast, it climbs very well, and it's also very agile. The only downside to it is its limited firepower of just two light machine guns and a cannon. You can, of course, increase the firepower by taking the gondolas, but those um, I usually try to avoid because they just cause all sorts of performance degradations because of the added weight and drag um, so the aircraft ends up being slower and less maneuverable in the end and I've just taken off from our airfield and over to my left you should soon see a dogfight uh, with a P-38, actually the P-38 is in all sorts of trouble because it's got um, I think a Fokker Wolf and a Dornier 217 Night Fighter on its tail, and you don't want to have a Night Fighter Dornier on your tail because that thing has wicked firepower. Four machine guns, four 20mm cannons, so yeah, don't ever <laughs> get one of these things on your tail, or oh, that's going to be lights out very, very quickly. So just a minute or so later I spot a huge furball in the middle of the map at low altitude and sure enough there's at least one enemy plane, a King Cobra, that everybody on my team seems to be hellbound to shoot down. I take a snapshot at him, damaging him but nothing too serious. He actually managed to uh, set one of our own on fire, he just shot down a Fokker Wolf, but it's now only a matter of time until he gets shot down himself because uh, he's got an angry mob of Luftwaffe fighters on his tail. A mixed bag of uh, 190s and 109s and you're sure as hell not going to run away uh, from those. So he's trying to be um, a little sneaky, trying to, to shake us off in the middle of this industrial area. But I can actually cut his turn and I get close enough to pump some shells into him and I crit him there and yeah he doesn't seem to be doing too well because he's not taking much of evasive actions anymore and somebody else in my team actually sets him on fire so I only get an enemy kill assist for that However, there on my right I spot another enemy, it's actually a P-47 Thunderbolt. He's now trying to set up himself behind a Fokker Wolf, so I come in at full speed and he's pulling up, but with all these enemy aircraft around him, that is a very, very poor position to be in. And yeah, he's, he's trying to shake me off, but in a P-47 Wow, and that was actually a very <laughs> close flyby by one of our team members, I think that was an LA-5. And yeah, he the P-47 is all in all sorts of trouble and I unfortunately I only get an enemy kill assist again. So that kind of sucks. Although I did put some good shots into him. And any second now. Yeah, there's a P-38 coming in full speed behind me and that LE-5, so I break into him. The P-38 is actually going for the LE-5 here. There's the Dornier 217 again. The P-38 is now trying to convert its airspeed into altitude. He's actually soon climbing up, but I guess he didn't, guess he didn't expect that to happen. <laughs> So, well, that sucks for him. I took a snap shot or a high deflection angle shot actually on at him and I took his wing clean off and we have another enemy here. That's actually a F4U Corsair. He's 
kind of interesting because they never served in Europe, but yeah, War Thunder Simulator mode, so I won't say any further. So, F4U just critted him, and of course he doesn't have any chance of shaking me, and there goes my second kill. So at this point there was only one enemy left and he was flying a P-38, but uh, we didn't. my team didn't actually know that at this point, because you don't see that on the player list. And for some strange reason, there he is, and he actually popped his smoke, which made him a very visible target. So um, he's got quite some speed and altitude on me, so I'll try to go after him. I don't think he's seen me at all. Um, he just does his wide right hand turn while I try to climb after him. Fortunately my water is running very hot so I have to keep an eye on that. But um, I don't think he was flying at full speed because otherwise he probably would have pulled away from me. Especially with his old advantage early on. But now I'm cold with him and I'm slowly but surely gaining on him. He's actually losing some altitude now, and he's dipping down. Yeah, he's losing altitude. I push my aircraft's nose down to follow him, and he's actually gone around now. A very wide left-hand turn, which allows me to cut his turn to get uh, close enough for uh, an shot at him. Backing out here for a second, but now with my uh, energy I can actually close in on him and I'm in fire. It's at this point only that he realizes he's actually got somebody on his tail and he tries to dodge by rolling left right, getting in a dive, but um, P-38 can very easily dodge Japanese aircraft by diving away. It's not going to be nearly as effective against Luftwaffe aircraft. He actually popped his smoke again. I don't know what is up with that, but it didn't help him at all. And now, well, that's the only aircraft that was left on the enemy team, so we've run, won that round, actually. So I managed to back three kills and two assists, which is not too bad at all. So this pretty much was it for this round of War Thunder Simulator Battle on the Operation Ruhr map. Um, it was like this was actually a very very short round with um, only like 10 minutes of flying, but a lot of action in a very small area of operation. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.